Welcome to Real to Real Outdoors. Captain Adam here. Uh, got a special guest, uh, Mr. Adam Lamb from Ludington Yacht Sales. We're going to have some tips and tricks on winter storage, how to prep your boat for that, and uh, keep it nice and dry and ready for the for the spring. So stay tuned. Hey guys, Adam Lamb from Ludington Yacht Sales here. Wanted to go over a few things regarding your boat prep for the winter. And uh, first off, obviously when the boat comes out of the water, uh, the, the, the part of the boat we don't get to see very often obviously is the bottom. So when that boat comes out, you've got a couple of chores that you need to do for the longevity of the boat and as well as just basic maintenance. So first and foremost, when the boat gets pulled out, make sure that the boat gets power washed and or acid washed. Uh, best of both worlds, if possible, have them both done. And what you're going to see when the boat comes out, this boat is obviously really, really clean. But when the boat comes out of the water for the first time in the fall, you're, you're always going to have a scum line. And that scum line is going to be just usually right above the bottom paint. And the only way to get that off is to use an acid. Uh, most marinas will use a muratic acid. You actually can put it on with a towel. And believe it or not, a, the, what you can scrub and scrub and scrub for hours on end and get nowhere with, will wipe right off with that muratic acid. And what that does is, is gonna keep your gel coat nice and shiny, and down the road you're not gonna have stains, and for longevity of the hull it's gonna look better. And if you're planning on selling the boat some point in time, the cleaner the hull, the better the boat's gonna sell. So moving forward with the process, right now your boat is in its facility, the bottom's been uh, power washed, it's been acid washed. So next thing we have to do is remove all of the water spots. We use toilet bowl cleaner, the works. A uh, couple reasons we use this is it's a clear liquid versus the blue liquid. And uh, we find that it just does a better job, doesn't leave streaks. Now, don't apply this directly to the hull of your boat. Apply this to a microfiber towel. And uh, uh, basically what you wanna do is work small sections at a time until you get the whole boat done. Now. Keep in mind, this is going to remove the water spots, but it's also going to remove the wax. We have a video that describes this whole process. So click follow through and follow up, follow up with us on that video. And this will, uh, again, this will take off the wax and your water spots. Now, we've got the hull sides done. We've got the bottom done. Now it's time to get under the bottom of the boat and check some of our, our running gear as well as our intakes. Now. What we're looking at right here, this is a main intake for the engines. And there are several different varieties of intakes for your air conditioning, for your engines, for raw water, things of that nature. It is important to make sure these are clear of any obstructions. In the Great Lakes, uh, we don't have many. We don't have barnacles like they do down in saltwater, but we do have zebra mussels. So, and those zebra mussels for boats that have a tendency to sit at the dock more than others, they will start to attach to this metal and that can actually cause a disruption in the flow through your engines. And that is a very bad thing because these engines, even though let's say they're a closed cooling engine, they still use lake water to cool the manifolds and the heat exchangers. So if this gets clogged, that means cold water from the lake is not gonna make it into your heat exchanger and therefore it's not gonna cool the coolant that runs through the engine. So make sure that these are clear of any obstructions. We've actually, I've seen plastic bags get wrapped up in these. I've seen uh, those Mylar balloons. Those are big ones. They'll actually wrap themselves into these, in and through these grates here. So take a look at them. Make sure that they're free of any obstructions. And that'll help the longevity of your boat because an overheated boat is not a happy boat. While you're down on the bottom of the boat, You've already checked out your through hauls. Now let's look at our zincs. So the, the boats have multiple zincs, sacrificial anodes. Basically what these are is if there's any stray current in the water around your dock, the electric current is going to attack the softest metal. And actually it's kind of a misnomer. These actually aren't zinc if you're in fresh water, they're actually magnesium, but people always change the ones on the back of the boat, but they forget about the ones on their prop shafts. And these are important because these also help protect the prop shaft from electrolysis. So when you're down here, check these out. These, these are looking exactly like they're supposed to look. They are showing some wear, but there's still a lot of life left in these. These are a maintenance item, guys. These need to be changed out every two, three, four years. Honestly, it depends on where your boat and the marina that you're in. If you have a lot of straight current in the water, these are gonna last maybe a season, sometimes two, sometimes three. If you have a marina, typically a newer marina, where you have virtually zero straight current, 
these are going to last quite a while. But you need to check them on a very regular basis. They are important. And again, it's a maintenance item, and it's something that's important for your boat. While you're down here, you might as well take an extra few minutes and inspect your running gear, inspect your shafts, your struts. You can't really see this, the cutlass bearings, but that's what's inside the strut here that attaches, that goes to the prop in the back. So same thing we did on our through hauls. Let's check to make sure there's no line wrapped around here. Those Mylar balloons can get cut in here. Maybe at the end of the season, you felt a different vibration that was new that you hadn't felt before. The boat's out of the water, take a peek at it. Don't try to fix it yourself. Talk to your mechanic, talk to a professional that knows what they're doing when it comes to these things. You know, obviously there's a whole lot going on from this prop shaft to this prop, to the rudder, to the strut. Have a professional take a look at it, but it's definitely something that needs to be looked at on an annual basis. Oh. Ah, hi there. So one of the things you want to do in the wintertime is make sure the holds are all dry. Any areas in the bilge don't have standing water, guys. It's bad for the boat. Now, obviously, we're making a little bit of fun of this. You don't have to crawl all the way down there like I just did. But what I recommend is you buy a shop vac, a two and a half gallon, maybe a five gallon shop vac. And that's its job. The only thing it does is suck water out of the bilge, go dispose of it, and wipe the bilge down. And the other thing we recommend in these particular areas, uh, the damp rid bags. You can buy them anywhere, buy them on Amazon, buy them at Meijer, Walmart, whatever. Hang them all over the boat or the actual damp rig container or the, the little buckets. Those are great too. Moisture is not your boat's friend. And the more moisture you can get out of the boat, the longer the boat will last and the longer the boat will serve you. All right, guys, we've talked about the hatches in the back of the boat, the exterior of the boat, the bilge, whatnot. We need to talk about the hatches inside the salon of the boat as well. These are equally as important to keep vented and keep clear of water as well. This particular area, this is on this boat, is where the shower sump box is. Your boat has one, I guarantee it. And I almost wager to bet that you don't check it every fall. This is something that needs to be checked every year because a couple of things can happen, guys. This, if you use your shower or any of the onboard uh, potable water, it'll go through, it's called gray water, okay? Gray water will go through this box and then gets pumped overboard. Inside this box, there's a little strainer as well as a bilge pump and a float switch. Now, over time, this box can get kind of grody. So you want to keep it clean every, every fall. Check it out. Check the float switch. Check the build. Check the strainer, okay? It can be full of hair. It can, like I said, it can get grody. But the thing is, if you don't check it, it gets extra grody. And that bilge pump will actually typically fail if it gets too dirty. The float switch will stop working. And then what happens is this box will overflow because it actually is not watertight. And now you've got water sitting in the very bottom of your keel inside your cabin. That can lead to moisture problems. That can cause stringer issues. That can cause mold, odor, none of which are good things, none of which are good for your boat. Again, looking at it a little bit from my perspective, whenever we're selling boats, these are places I look almost immediately because a surveyor, a potential buyer, they're going to look at this as well. And this little white box right here can cause a whole lot of problems over a long period of time. And it's a very simple thing to check. The other thing, if there is any moisture down here, these hatches, I like to leave them just like this, okay? Now, be careful because obviously this is not stable. Falling in a hatch like this is not any fun to do. However, you know, if the boat's in storage, people shouldn't be getting on and off it, but be aware, leave a note. What I like to do is I close the cabin door leave a little bit of breathing area and open some windows inside the boat, leave a note on the door saying hatches are open. Okay. And put them, turn them like this so people can see them. All right, guys, we've talked about hatches. We talked about the shower sump box, talked about the bilge, a couple other things that get forgotten about all the time. If your boat has an ice maker, it's probably got a refrigerator. What happens? People forget. They pull the boat out. See this bin right here. This bin will be full of ice whenever the boat comes out of out of the water because it's been plugged in and it makes ice boat comes out of the water gets unplugged guess what happens this ice this water is going to melt and this is closed in here and forgotten about until spring guess what happens when you open this up in spring and it's been full of water you get a not so pleasant surprise so again it's a two second thing check this make sure it's empty on your refrigerators either in the cockpit or down below in the galley. Leave that fridge open. Don't let it close. This is a 
airtight seal. And if there's any moisture in there and just make sure it's empty, that's another fun science experiment you don't want to deal with if you forget about, okay? So empty the fridge, empty the ice maker, get the water out, wipe them out, leave them open all year, or all season, off season that is, when the boat's inside storage. All right, guys, we've talked a lot about the bilge and whatnot. Down here where I'm sitting right now, I want to go over a few things. There's actually, we could probably spend an entire episode talking about things to do in the bilge. But I wanted to point out a couple of quick thing, uh, features that, because all boats are different, this particular boat I wanted to show. So this right here, what we're looking at, is a shower sump box. Now, we were discussing it when I was in the Ford salon. We're looking at actually the air conditioner sump box right here. This particular boat has multiple air conditioning units and they all feed into this box and this box pumps them overboard. However, I wanted to show you this box because this is exactly what I was talking about. This has the strainer, the, the bilge pump and the float switch. And the way you see this one is the way ideally you'd like to see yours. This is extremely clean. It's been taken care of the way you're supposed to do it. Also, we're looking at the bottom, we're in, we're in the keel, we're at the very bottom of the boat. This is what the bilge is supposed to look like, folks. It's perfectly clean, it's dry. Um, now we're, we're lucky that we're on a fairly new boat and this boat has been very well taken care of. However, in the perfect world, this is the way you'd like your boat to be. Now, the other thing we can do is if you had those damper bags we were talking about earlier, you can hang those down here in the bilge as well. That's gonna suck any, any residual moisture that's going to be in this area. And again, this hatch that we're looking through, I would recommend leaving it open so the boat can breathe. All right, guys, we've gone through a lot as far as care and custody of the boat on the stern. We're moving forward now to probably one of my biggest pet peeves as a yacht broker for the last 20 plus years. This is one of the easiest things to remedy, and it almost never gets taken care of. Your anchor locker is a... It can be an absolute disaster if you leave your wet, soggy anchor line in this anchor locker all winter long and don't tend to it. Guys, it is so easy to open this up, pull your anchor line out. You can drape it. This one is, this one is draped. It's all the way pulled out. We're, we're in a private barn, so this particular owner has a nice option to do this here. What I recommend doing if you're in a storage facility where most people are, Take this anchor line out, remove it from the boat, and then run it under the boat, uh, under the keel, and let it dry out, okay? Leave this anchor locker hatch open as well. Think about where we are right now. This, part, this particular part of the boat is very close to the living quarters, typically the forward stateroom. This area uh, structurally is very important. Anyway, long story short, if this area gets wet, you can have uh, issues with rot. You can have high levels of moisture. Again, if you are planning to keep your boat for a long time, if you are going to sell your boat in the future, this is an area of the vessel that is so easy to take care of and it gets overlooked on such a regular basis. Please, please, please don't forget to check your anchor locker. Get that wet anchor line out of here. Even if you have all chain Open this up so it can dry out because typically these are not watertight. These hatches, if you're in a heavy rain or in heavy seas, water can work its way down here, guys. Leave this hatch open. If you have a line, take it out, let it dry out, and it'll be much, much better for the boat and the longevity of the boat. Another item that is extremely easy to monitor and take care of that also gets overlooked on a regular basis is your railings. These stanchions, guys, go directly into the deck, okay? And over time, they can wick water through these screws. It's a great idea in the wintertime. This is something you don't have to do every year, but I recommend doing it on a fairly regular basis based on how the boat is taken care of. You can pull these screws out, let them breathe, take them out for 30 days or so, the boat's inside, you don't need the railing. Again, put a note on it saying don't touch. There's lots of things you can do to protect that. However, when you're done, you can, uh, it's a marine, it's called the 4200, it's a 3M product. Do not use 5200, okay? 5200, you'll never, if you use 5200, you'll never get these screws out ever, ever again. But 4200 is a, it's a, a silicone that will rebed these screws and you're not gonna have any moisture get down through there again. Again, longevity of the boat, It'll help a lot. Same thing with these cleats. 
you can do that. You can pull these screws out of the cleats same way. Let them breathe. Put the 4200 in. Let it dry. I say that it, it, it says it'll cure in 24 to 48 hours. Give it a couple days. Honestly, do it on a do it on a weekend. Come back the following weekend and rebed the screws, and your boat will will thank you in spades. All right, we're back down in the bilge again, and I wanted to discuss quickly batteries and what to do with your batteries uh, in the off season while the boat's inside heated storage. You have a couple of options and you've got to be careful because if you have an older boat and you don't have automatic chargers and you leave your boat plugged in, you can do a couple of things. You can fry your batteries and or your battery chargers. And that is no good for anybody and can ruin a lot of things. You can Basically, what you do is you smoke your batteries. It's a dry cell. You burn up all the, the, the acid, the distilled water in the batteries, and that's not good. You have to replace your batteries. Um, if you don't have the ability to charge them at all, it is best to unhook them and remove them. And if you can, take them home, put them in a cool, dry place. And if you, ha if you can, again, with a trickle charger, keep them charged for the off-season. Uh, in this particular situation, the boat we're on, uh, he has power to this boat all winter long, and he has automatic chargers. And the best case scenario for these is we leave the batteries turned on, we leave the battery charger tur chargers turned on, and basically these chargers will kick on as needed to keep the batteries as fresh as possible. So this is a best case scenario. Uh, again, private barn, he's got his own, his own shore power cord. He's got a 30 amp service here in his building and uh, he keeps his batteries fresh and the building's warm. And so this is a great scenario. If this is not your scenario, like we said, um, you want to pull the batteries out and, and put them in a, in a warm environment, dry environment on a trickle charger. If you can't do any of those things, your best case scenario is to take the battery and disconnect the batteries while they're in the boat. Um, there are certain things that will drain the batteries no matter what. The, the biggest culprit is typically the stereo memory on your radio. Believe it or not, that is always a hotline, and that little memory um, feature will drain and kill the batteries in your boat. All right, so we have worked our way from the bottom of the boat to the back of the boat to the inside of the boat to the deck to the anchor locker up top. Now we're down below, and we're still talking about the anchor line. Now, the anchor line in this particular boat has been dried. It's very nice, clean. Uh, a couple of things will happen. This line will last longer uh, and it will function better. The other thing that happens with windlasses, when an anchor line is, is wet all the time, um, the actual windlass, the way it grabs a hold of these, it can slip and it will not operate as designed. So um, this particular line we've got hanging here, it has been dried now. In your case, on your boat, because typically your boat's not going to be in a private facility like this, you want to take your line and you want to lay it under the boat, and that way it's not in the way. And one of the major important things to doing that is if this is laying here and it's on the ground and it's in a, in a big storage facility, this can actually allow critters, aka mice or rodents or whatnot, to crawl up this onto your boats. And if you had left food or anything in your cupboards, or if the mice are cold, they're going to crawl into your boat and they're going to make a nest, all of which is no bueno for your boat. So you don't want having you don't want to have any lines hanging down on the floor where a rodent can actually crawl up it. And you're going to say, yeah, right, that's not going to happen. Trust me, I have seen it happen, and it is no fun for anybody involved. Um, another scenario, and this is something I learned this past off season from my buddy Captain Mark. Um, putting peppermint oil on uh, cotton balls is an amazing way to keep spiders at bay while your boat's inside heated storage for the winter. And also twofold, it makes the inside of the boat smell really nice. So I guess moral of the story is don't have any lines hanging down off the cleats. Sometimes when boats get put away, they get stashed and the lines will fall off. Go to your boat, put your lines away. I would highly recommend washing your lines. We've talked about this uh, multiple times we talked about it on the podcast and I know uh, Mikey's talked about it uh, as far as how to care for your lines take the lines off the boat for the winter I highly recommend doing this don't do this at your house um, buy one of those uh, it's a mesh bag put your lines in the mesh bag take it to a laundromat and wash them and use fabric softener when you wash them 
don't dry them in the dryer. Take them home or bring them back to the, and put them under the boat. Your lines will be clean, they will be soft, and they will last a whole lot longer. Thanks for joining us. We hope you liked what you saw today and took away some information that will make your boating experience better. And come springtime, your boat will be in better health, and we'll thank you for it. If you liked what you saw, please click and subscribe on Real to Real Outdoors. Tell your friends, tell everybody you know. And uh, I've enjoyed spending time with you today. Please, I want to give a huge shout out to Captain Mark Williams and Silver Addiction Charters for letting us crawl all over his absolute beautiful boat in his beautiful barn here uh, just outside of Ludington. And uh, again, my name is Adam Lamb. I am from Ludington Yacht Sales. Of course, we are your Great Lakes premier boat brokerage. We have offices in Ludington, Traverse City, Manistee, and Spring Lake. And it would be my honor to help either buy or sell with you. Thanks.